Hello, people, and welcome to chapter 55 of The Last Thoughts of a Busy Mind. This one I'm gonna name The Dream Project, and I'll get to why in a bit. Just a quick sort of reminder I'm gonna do this at the beginning this time. Don't forget to send me a message on Anchor. Don't forget to share the podcast, all of that. And uh, yeah, now that I've tricked you in not doing all of them, let's talk about the drink today. It's the return of an age old classic. <laughs> it's the return of blue curacao syrup and water. Yes, uh, I had it, I have it in one of these um, shakers that you know you're supposed to shake your sports drink in. And uh, let me just take a sip. I have a lot of ice here, which is what you can hear in the background. Come on, open up. Mm. Actually, the ratio isn't bad, which is good. I thought I might have needed to dilute it more later, but no, this is actually perfect. So, I hate weeks like this. <laughs> Uh, when when it comes to recording the last parts, because weeks like this, when um, it's either too melancholy or it's something happening that I can't really talk about while I'm in Iran, um, or just um, nothing interesting happens. I think I'm better at recording the last parts when I'm miserable, and I'm not. I actually had an incredibly fun day uh, at my friend's house. We did some recording and l look forward to that and we played a lot of games so it was incredibly fun thank you Muhammad I know you're I know uh, I hope you're listening <laughs> so thank you again this it was an incredibly fun week and oh did, was that my phone no so why the dream project the reason is, um, so with nothing special to talk about, I thought I'd give you sort of a pitch. I have this idea, I, I had it for a while, of a remake, not a remake, but an adaptation. I mean, it's a remake, there was already a movie, of Man of La Mancha, the musical about Don Quixote. It's... Uh, just, just listen to me. Um... The, the story of the musical, if you are not familiar with it, a man called Cervantes, uh, hint, hint, <laughs> it's the guy who wrote Don Quixote, is thrown into a jail uh, b due to the Inquisition, and he then tells the story of Don Quixote, in musical form, of course. And it's different than the book. It's very different than the book. Um, it uh, the, it uh, has... I actually have a video on it, <laughs> so I'm going to link it in the description so you can go and check that out, because I don't want to spend a large chunk of the episode talking about the story. And either than that, or you can just, you know, read it up on Wikipedia. <laughs> but yeah, I've had this idea for a while, and it's one of those, I'm not going to call it passion project, because passion project is usually something you work towards. This is a dream project. This is one I want to do. I wish I can do. Uh, if I'm given enough money, I will probably do it. <laughs> but um, what, uh, what's the idea of it? Okay, we have a movie of it. It's not very good. It stars Peter O'Toole and uh, Sophia Loren. I for one second, I forgot her name. And it's not very good. It is so the the singing is not very good. Sophia Loren ruins one of the best songs in the history of musicals, which is Aldonza. And I think the way they went about making that movie was wrong. You have scenes of Cervantes in the jail, and when the story starts, it sort of uh, shifts into the world of make-believe, and you'll see like a set outside of the prison, and the people in the prison are playing different characters. So... I had an idea 
which is closer to probably what it would have been like on stage. I haven't seen it on stage because, you know, I live in Iran, all of that. Oh, God damn it, I just hit my <laughs> glasses with my hand. That's how excited I am to talk about this project, which isn't going to happen, but one can do it. I'm actually going to tell you about the casting too. So, my idea is that you don't do that. Everything happens in in the prison cell. Uh, basically a dungeon. Imagine like a giant dungeon, high walls, you're, you're in a pit, and you basically have the people in the dungeon, like the um, Peter O'Toole version, play the characters of the story of Don Quixote. But while you're doing it, you, you're not transported outside of the dungeon. You're just in there all the time. The camera, whenever you, whenever someone is singing and it's like an intimate moment, you can see in the background all of the other prisoners who are not part of that scene looking at it. And I think it can be incredibly interesting. I'm not going to say precisely good because, again, the logistics, I need to see more. Uh, but it's an idea that I think can result in an incredibly interesting movie. And, um, for example, The Golden Helmet of Mambrino, uh, which is one of my favorite songs. Don Quixote is... Um, uh, the Don Quixote and Sancho are talking to the people who are supposed to be the patrons of the tavern. And the barber comes singing, Oh, I am a little barber on an ordinary way. Um, before that scene, you can see Sancho basically leaving Don Quixote's uh, side. Uh, because Sancho is actually the guy who helps uh, Cervantes too. It, it, it all makes sense. Um, give one of the prisoners a um, uh, shaving basin and uh, say uh, uh, one of those barber razors, those old ones, and say, tell him that, you know, you, you, you're the barber. Go on, do it. And he sort of basically knows what to do. Yeah, it's, you need to suspend your disbelief that all of these people know exactly what to sing at the right moment. But anyways... So he um, he sings it and comes over. Don Quixote sees him, goes and does the whole thing. You know, give me your, that's the golden helmet of Mambrino. And the barber, no, this is a shaving basin. No, no, that's the golden helmet of Mambrino. And starts to sing the golden helmet of Mambrino. The golden helmet of Mambrino. With so glorious a past. Too long has thou been lost to glory, and ding, ding, now dear this gone at last. Golden, and as he's singing, he's walking to the people, and the prisoners basically are sitting and watching it move out of the way. He goes and goes on top of his bundle, like uh, the prisoner's belongings are all in the middle in sort of a big bundle he goes on top of that as he sings before putting the helmet on his head and singing the golden helmet of Mambrino there can be no hut like thee and uh, as he's singing all of the prisoners are, are just sort of looking up at him so you can see all of it now uh, why, why, would, why would I say this because in the story there is a looming threat that at any moment uh, the inquisitors can come and break the break the story and that is much more strong that is stronger in my opinion if you can't leave the dungeon if you are like Cervantes like all of these other prisoners part of that dungeon there is no safe space and the dungeon needs to be around so there's no corners people can hide and like different levels and all of that so uh, that that is one of the reasons another one is by doing it this way in my opinion you sort of embold the message of the musical which is you know the uh, value of dreaming the value of to quote the musical itself putting down the burden of sanity 
So when you're transported out of the dungeon, whenever the Don Quixote stuff happens, it, it it's so literal in a sense that, oh, you know, we are jumping into another world. Woo! That I think it lessens the effect. I know usually it helps, but in this case, you need to see all of the others, all of the unbelievers, all of the people who are just watching this um, charade. And at the end of the, because at the end of the musical, there is a very important scene where um, uh, Cervantes is taken up by the Inquisitors. And all of the prisoners in the dungeon start singing uh, The Impossible Dream. To dream the impossible dream, to fight the unbeatable foe, to bear with unbearable sorrow. And in the Peter O'Toole movie, because you've been seeing the story of Don Quixote from like another world, like it's outside of the dungeon, when you move back in there, it feel it doesn't feel as. Uh, poignant as it needs to be it doesn't feel as impactful as it can be i think because you you weren't really spending time with these people but if if you literally cannot escape them they're there in the background and all times they're looking at you even when it's not their scene and they're supposed to be somewhere else they're looking at what the story is going on and then at the end they get to sing to dream the impossible dream, I think it would be like incredibly more impactful. Now you you can't say I'm wrong, and if you do think I'm wrong, please do tell me. This is something that I I, I really now I, I know I've talked about it before. I really need I love communication with people all around the world, but this is like I really need to hear from you on this like do you think it would be good or no or whatever you think <laughs> just let me know now with that sort of out of the way uh, i want to also do about a bunch of dream stuff meaning uh, not, not not in the movie like i want to do him cast um jokingly i want not jokingly like jokingly in a uh American Gods video that I did a while ago, I said Peter Capaldi as Don Quixote. I think for this, Peter Capaldi is actually going to work. First of all, he uh, he was part of a band. He can sing. Uh, he, he knows music well enough. And he kind of looks like Don Quixote. <laughs> like the um, uh, thin, lanky, um, bony Don Quixote. So... I mean that that would be great. I understand he's not Spanish and Cervantes is Spanish, but I don't know. I think in this case uh, I'm okay with it, but I also understand why it would be troubling. I, I need to think on that. But if not, the joke I made in that video also works. Antonio Banderas is really good too. He's on the older side now, but and he's not as bony as Capaldi. But actually, that would work amazingly too because we know he can sing. Like, we've heard him sing amazingly, whether in Desperado or um, Shrek 2. <laughs> so we know he can sing, and he can sing amazingly. And he, know how to, he knows how to play guitar and all of that. He, he's a great actor, by the way. So we know he can do that. So either any of these two is great. Uh, for the role of the uh, muleteer, the ones who sort of grab and do stuff, I don't want to say the word, the R word to Aldonza. I wanted Javier Bardem because they're supposed to be more brutish. And um, Brian Blessed played the role in Peter O'Toole's movie, which I think he did amazingly. But I've, I don't think Javier Bardem has a good singing voice, so I just want I want him to be there. Uh, it's an ensemble cast. If you can, I mean, if he can be in Dune for five minutes, he can be in here for like ten minutes <laughs> in the main scene. Because as I said, every character is in the background; like you can't get away from them. I also want Jeremy Irons to play the part way because a I love Jeremy Irons. 
two, he has a very funny song, the Padre, which is the only thinking of him. The only thinking of him, which I think uh, Ivans is not very really known for his comedy, but I think it works amazingly if he he was the guy who did it. And uh, there was also a, a really good song that the auto movie cut for some reason, but for each is Dulcinea, to each his own Dulcinea. And I think that would be really great by Irons too. So, so far we have the Molitier, the Don Quixote, and uh, the Padre. So, Sancho. I don't know. I think James Coco, the guy who played Sancho in uh, the Pretty Tool version, was just so perfect that I can't really imagine anyone else. Jack Black, maybe? I don't know. I really don't know. But not Josh Gad. Please, no Josh Gad. I don't. I don't want another musical. I know James Corden. Not these two. Not these two. Anyone but these two. Um, mm, so yeah. For Sancho, I really have no idea. Again, Jack Black might be a good idea, but you know his his ener- his energy isn't so innocent as it is um, malicious, and I want someone more innocent. Hmm, I don't know. Anyways, uh, so so for that, for Aldonza, well, of course, uh, Salma Hayek would be great. I uh. She, she has a great voice, and I'm sure she can sing. And again, she's a great actress. So the Aldonza scene, uh, she's crying that uh, to Don Quixote that you know you're ruin, you're ruining me because you're being nice to me and I don't know how to deal with that. <laughs> so Salma Hayek is good. I know what I'm saying is making no sense. I probably a lot of people are cringing at this moment, and you're very right. But, you know, it's just, just let's have fun with it. I told you what I had for the story, for the direction of the movie. And the story is the story of the musical, and the music is the music of the musical. So I'm just, you know, sort of telling you if I can make it, like, literally right now, who I would choose. Because if I could choose anyone, I would definitely put Christopher Lee as Don Quixote. He already sang both... um, the Impossible Dream and I Am I Don Quixote to great extent. Um, definitely check them out. Like, look them up on YouTube and listen to them. They're, they're great. Like he did amazingly. Hmm. So what else? Who watch? Uh, there is the innkeeper, uh, which sings Knights of the Woeful Countenance. Hell Knight of the Woeful Countenance. Now, I think for just this is referential, no other reason, Jonathan Price, because he played Don Quixote in The Man Who Killed Don Quixote, or any of the actors who are still alive from the original Peter O'Toole, which are not very, I mean, Brian Blessed could work, is he alive? Oh my god, is he dead and I just, I didn't know, Brian Blessed, come on, be alive, no, no, he's alive, he's 85 years old though, god damn. I mean, Brian Blessed could work. He has to sing, though. But the song is actually working great for his voice. Mm, or, um, because I would have loved if Ian Richardson was still alive and could play this role. But, you know. And, yeah, those are the main characters. I also want Michael Palin and Terry Gilliam to be two of the Inquisitors from a Spanish Inquisition because... If you don't know already, there is no point in me explaining it. <laughs> so yeah, th- that's sort of my dream cast too. But if sometimes thinking about this stuff just really helps me because I can visualize a whole movie and just, you know, maybe one day I can make it. Maybe this will become sort of, in the f- years, years from now, you will listen back to this and say, ah, oh, he told us he would make it. If only, yeah? So yeah, this is the one I will probably pursue if I can. This gonna, this is going to be my dune. <laughs> Ali Ham says, Man of La Mancha. 
another document you have a failed project anyways don't forget to send me a message just talk to me and i will see you next week